Okay. Welcome to a battery special episode of Fully Charged. Now, we all know what a battery is, it's just a thing that you store electricity in, but there is a little bit of a gap between general public understanding and actual technological development in this area. Here's some very basic facts. Now, myth one, batteries are really expensive. In 2005, it cost $1,000 to manufacture a battery that could store one kilowatt hour of electricity. But that was 2005. Just in case you hadn't noticed, it's now 2015 and things have changed a bit. It now costs less than $250 to manufacture a battery that stores one kilowatt hour of electricity. So what does all this mean? I mean, who gives a stuff how much a battery costs? Well, cheaper batteries means they can be used for lots of other things other than phones and laptops and electric cars. How about a battery for your house? Now, why on earth, you ask, do I want a battery for my house? Well, to understand that, you kind of need to understand how we all use electricity every day. It's a little bit uppy and downy. It's a bit peaks and troughs. So if you charge your battery at night using off-peak or cheaper electricity, and then you use that in the daytime during the peak periods, not only would you save a lot of money, but you would take a bit of stress off the national grid. And if you charged your batteries from, say, solar panels on your roof, you would save even more money and have to spend even less on your electricity bill. But if it's just you in your house, it's not going to make any difference in the world. But if 10,000 people had batteries in their homes, you might even just about be able to register it at the National Grid Control Room. And if a million people had them in their homes, it would make quite a big difference. And if 10 million people had them in their homes, experts agree that we would need five less power stations in the United Kingdom. I think that makes a very big difference. So where can you get a home battery? I mean, I didn't see one at Argos the last time I popped in to get some really rubbish garden furniture. Well, I saw one at CES in Las Vegas earlier this year. So the role of these boxes is really a one box solution. So you already identified this correctly. Yeah. And what you need is in this box. What we have is um, batteries. You can choose from 4.4 kilowatt up to 13.2. Right. So typically a classical house in the UK might need about 8.8 .8 kilowatt hour. We have in there an inverter for the photovoltaic and we have a battery converter inside and here the little black box is the brain of this machine. Right, and this, and is, this, this, is, this is telling you what power, you, what energy you're getting from the panels and what you're using in the house? It's telling you, but the good thing is you don't have to care at all about everything. It's right. done everything automatically. This box is detecting how much energy comes from your roof yeah. uh, on DC power. It first is um, taking care of your self-consumption, so whatever is needed as energy in your house will be satisfied. Right. If there is energy left, we put the energy into the battery. Right. And if the battery is full and there is no energy needed in your house, then we feed the rest of the energy into, into, into the, the grid. grid. And all right. is done automatically. You don't right. have to care about it. So you're not coming out and No, you don't have to touch any switches yeah, yeah. and so on. It was small, it was quite slim, and it was made by Bosch. It was wonderful. And then just a couple of weeks ago, a bloke called Elon Musk unveiled what he called the Tesla Power. Wall. It's not that big, it's very slim, it can be fitted on a wall either inside or outside your home and it costs a lot less than a lot of people expected, about the same as a domestic boiler. But instead of using more fuel, this will actually save you money. In the first day after Tesla announced the Powerwall, they sold 38,000 units, which might indicate there's a bit of a demand for them. Myth 2 batteries wear out and we have to throw them away. Ah, yes, that thorny old question. Well, at this point, I reach a rather delicate and difficult point in the history of fully charged. In the past, having a pop at the top gear chaps was good sport. It was pointless but fun, like an ant shouting at an elephant. But since the chump who thumped for rump debacle of the top gear brand, it doesn't really feel the same anymore. It's more like I'm the school bully who's gone outside the gates and is kicking a toddler down the street. It's just not right. However, there is a point to all this, because when Big Mr C reviewed the Nissan Leaf, a car which he loved driving, by the way, he did say that the battery was the big problem. He said, and I quote, the problem with this car is the owner's going to have to throw the battery away after three years. Well, interestingly, that episode was recorded three years ago, and the woman who bought the actual model of the Nissan Leaf that Jeremy Clarkson drove lives in London. So I thought I'd pop along to see her and see if, after three years, she'd thrown away her battery. 
Hello, Blanco, Robert. Oh, good Hi. Good morning. Hi, I've come to see your car. Okay, <laughs> yeah. then uh, let me grab my coat. Yeah, you'll need a coat. We'll, uh, it's, it's quite go cold. Straight in. <laughs> okay. So, th is this your car here, Blanca? Indeed, that's right. my Nissan Leaf. Looking very, very <laughs> smart and tidy. So, what, what made you choose an electric car, though, in, in the first place? Well, as you can see, I live in central London. I work in central London, and so there are lots of advantages to um, electric cars. You don't pay congestion, you get free parking, zero emissions. And, um, and quite honestly, this, this car drives beautifully. Oh, it's right. like good, nice maneuvering. And right. There was a lot of talk in the early days about the batteries and whether the batteries would wear out. Have you had any problems with the batteries in your car? Uh, no. As I say, again, most of my driving is done within London. Right. Um, so there are plenty of charging points. I charge it at home and I charge it at work. Right. Um, and so, no. Um, it also tells you pretty much how far you can yeah, go. <laughs> yeah. So you can oh you can charge at work as well. That's a big advantage then. So when you when you when the car's parked at work, it's charging there. Yes. And do they make you pay for that? Uh, yeah. I actually, <laughs> <laughs> I actually have to pay six pounds a month from my salary for right. you know twenty working days a month. Yeah, six pounds. That's not too bad actually, is it? That's cheap. It's cheaper than if you had a pe if you were buying petrol every day. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I was. Spending about 150 pounds on on petrol before I bought it. Right. A month, yeah. So it's gone from 150 pounds a month on fuel to six. Yes. That's not bad. Um, but I suppose you're also paying a bit at home as well. But do you charge it yes. overnight at home? Is that usually when it's plugged in? I charge it mostly at work, and right. then um, because we have a secure underground car park. Right. Um, and it, it charges obviously. I'm there like eight eight yeah. hours. So it's full when you leave work. Yes. Yeah. Now, did you know that your car's a bit famous? Um, I, I didn't know at first, no, I didn't know when I, when I right, bought it, right. I found out since. <laughs> so it was the actual car that they used on Top Gear when they reviewed the car on Top Gear, which is, which is quite intriguing, because I didn't know that either until this morning. You know, yes, quite... well, of course, as soon as I found out, I went and watched the episode. Yeah. And what did you think of his, his, his opinion about, of the car? Uh, well, I guess, you know, they were trying to make it funny, you know, yeah. but I think, you know, there's really horses for courses. All in all, I think it's fair to say that this journey has put a lot of the myths about batteries in electric vehicles to bed. The fantastic Nissan Leaf that I've been driving around all day is proof positive that battery technology is reliable and electric vehicles are the future. And just one other little bit of information. This is Wizzy, the Nissan Leaf taxi run by CNC Taxis in St. Austell, Cornwall. It recently passed 100,000 miles and it's only two years old. The battery is still at 98% of its original capacity and the company has saved an estimated £17,000 in fuel and servicing costs in that time. So the conclusion is the batteries will last long enough for any of us. There is only one thing I think we can be certain of in the near future, and that is that batteries will get cheaper and they'll get more energy dense, smaller, lighter, more powerful. Everything else in the future, as we all know, is up for grabs. So if you have been, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.